Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome to another week of VR's live stream. For those of you guys who don't know me, uh, once again, my name is Jordan. I am one of the youth leaders here at Vertical Reality alongside Andrea Bongiovanni, who is the youth leader to our girls, um, and also her fiance, uh, Ronnie Smith. Um, so if you remember last week, Andrea had the great idea of starting a reading plan on the Uversion app along with last week's message. And last week, Andrea had an awesome message about the importance of being still. And last week, we followed up her, um, her message with a reading plan about um, exile and how to grow and thrive in this season of separation while we're all quarantined. And there's a lot of great stuff in there. If you, uh, if you haven't gone through it yet, I, I really recommend it. Um, the name of the reading plan was um, Quarantine Youth Exile. Um, so parents, if you want to check it out, or if you haven't already, I would uh, recommend it. But this week, we're going to be continuing with that same idea. We're going to be doing another daily devotional after tonight's message. Um, so parents, students, please feel free to read along. If you want an invite to that on the Uversion app, you just have to create a profile. Uh, you can message Andrea on Facebook, text her if you have her number, or message her. I don't know if the Uversion app has messaging. Um, but if not, then if you don't... Um, have her number or uh, you can't find her on Facebook, you can, I'm sh pretty sure, also find the link to it in the comments below. So definitely check that out. But for tonight and for the remainder of this week, we are going to be talking about prayer. And in our time together tonight, I kind of want to focus in on and answer three questions when it comes to prayer. And that is, one, what is prayer? Two, why should I pray? And three, how do I pray? And I think these, you know, three, uh, the answers to these three questions are simple, they're easy, but if we can kind of begin to understand these three things, um, then we can understand really the importance of prayer and how simple and easy it really is. So first question, what is prayer? And I feel like a lot of times when you're talking about prayer, when you're talking about, when you're talking about really anything, um, it's sometimes easier to understand what it is when you understand first what it's not. And so prayer, first and foremost, is not like making a birthday wish. You know, every year on our birthdays, we have a nice big cake, probably our favorite kind of frosting and our favorite kind of filling. And we put candles on top for normally the number of candles as what year you're turning. Um, and everybody sings you happy birthday. Or if you're part of the Manns or the Glovins family, uh, they'll sing you happy birthday seven times, seven different ways. And then you blow out the candles and you make a wish. Uh, but oftentimes on your birthday, that's just wishful thinking. You know, it's kind of just hopeful thinking. You're not really expecting what you're asking for to happen. You just kind of throw it out there and you say, man, yeah, this would be really nice uh, if it happened. Uh, but you don't really know, you know, like who's answering those birthday wishes. Nobody really knows what they are. And you're supposed to not tell anybody or it makes the wish not, uh, not happen. Uh, but it's really just wishful or hopeful thinking. But that's not what prayer is. Prayer is not just wishful or hopeful thinking. Um, prayer is intentionally asking for and seeking the guidance of God. It's not just hopeful, um, you know, whatever kind of uh, wishes. You know, it's very intentional. The second thing is that prayer is not like putting a dollar in a vending machine. You know, so often... Um, our prayers can be like this, where every time we talk to God, we just ask for something that we want. And I was kind of thinking about this as I was preparing for it. Is you know, like imagine if, if you had a friend that that was like that. You know, say you're at your house one day, you're you're playing some Xbox or you're you're painting your nails, girls or whatever, and your friend comes and they knock on the door, and you're so excited to see him, and you answer the door, and you say, "Oh my gosh, how's it going? Do you wanna do you wanna come in? Do you wanna you know get some food? Do you wanna watch a movie or something?" They're like, no, you know, I'm kind of, I'm kind of busy. Um, I was really just wondering if you had 20 bucks. And like a good friend, you'd be like, well, yeah, yeah, I've got 20 bucks. And so you'd give them 20 bucks or you'd ask your parents and they'd give them 20 bucks and they'd say, all right, thanks. And then they leave, you know, and imagine how awkward that would be. And then imagine that happens again the next week, you know, and then again the next week. You know, I, I would imagine that you wouldn't be friends with that person for very long if all that they ever came to you for was just stuff. They just wanted stuff. They wanted money. You know, it would make you feel like they don't really want you. They just want your stuff. 
or they just want your money, that your money or your stuff is more important to them than you are. And a lot of times when we pray to God, you know, we can kind of be like that friend. We can kind of be like that person. But prayer isn't supposed to be transactional. You know, it's, it's not about doing enough good to make God answer our prayers. And, and it's not about just asking God for stuff that we need or stuff that we would like. You know, prayer is supposed to be simple. You know, prayer is supposed to be relational. And there's, there's no magic formula uh, to prayer, to having the perfect prayer. God doesn't have any prefer, or pre- preferred prayer pose. Um, and there's no performance evaluations of how well you do on your prayer or in, in talking to God. Um, prayer is just so, supposed to be simple. Prayer is just supposed to be relational. And the a kind of an analogy that I want to use here talking about prayer is that prayer is kind of like writing a letter to somebody that you love. And I want to tell you a little bit of a story uh, to kind of expound on that a little bit. See, when I was a little kid, I think I was in second grade. I think I was in second grade. My brother... Um, decided to, when he graduated, he decided to join the military, go to the Marine Corps, and um, he went off to boot camp. You know, before my brother left, you know, he was like one of the coolest people that I knew. You know, there was one summer, I spent the entire summer with him, and uh, he would watch me almost every day. You know, I would wake up, I would watch TV, and my brother would be sleeping, so when my parents left, I would go and wake my brother up. And, of course, he never wanted to get up that early, so he had, like, this box, super old box TV and a PlayStation 2 sitting in a, uh, on his dresser in his bedroom. And so I would go and I would wake him up, and he would just give me the controller. And so I would jump on his legs and sit across his legs while he was sound asleep, and I would just sit there and play Spider-Man on the PlayStation 2 until we would get up around, like, 11 o'clock and, and probably eat cereal for breakfast. Um, and we would, but we would do everything together. Um, not everything, but we, we would do a lot together. And, and he was my big brother. He was like the coolest person that I know and or that I knew at the time. And we were really close. And so when he left for boot camp, you know, it was really hard for me at two years old or two in second grade. Um, I didn't quite understand what was going on, and and it would, took a while for me to comprehend it because when he left, he, he was just gone. And I remember I was so sad, you know, I went down to the school counselor a couple of times. I was crying. I was like, my brother is at boot camp. And she was like, yeah, I know it's going to be okay. Because, but I didn't know what was going on. And uh, then a couple of weeks later, um, after this had gone on and after he left, then we got a letter in the mail. And it was from my brother. You know, we were so excited. You know, you know my mom and I, my brothers and sisters, we all crowded around the kitchen table. We opened up really fast, and, and we all read it. And I, I don't know if I could even read it at that point, so my mom probably read it out loud to me. And it was like chicken scratch writing. It was all sideways, and it was really fast because it didn't have a, time, a lot of time to write. Uh, but almost every day after that, or every couple of days, we would get a new letter, and we would always write back to him. Um, because they always gave them time normally to, to write us letters. And even if my brother didn't have time to write letters during the day, uh, he would actually, under the covers at night in boot camp, uh, with a pen and paper, you know, write to us before he went to bed. And those were really funny letters because they were like like sideways up the paper instead of actually on the lines because he couldn't see the lines. Um, but we were always so excited to get those letters, and we were always so excited to write back to him. You know, and we would read every single word that he wrote to us, and then and then we would take our time writing back to him and, and to ask him questions and to see how things were going. And he would tell us about how things were going uh, with him. And, you know, that, that time was so precious to us because that's all that we had. That's the only way that we could communicate with my brother. And so when it comes to prayer, you know, prayer is a lot like that. It's like having somebody that you love not being right next to you. And the only way that you can communicate with them is, like writing, is, is by writing them a letter. You know, so prayer isn't just always about asking for stuff. You know, it, it's, it's simple. It's just talking to somebody that you love, that, that you can't feel, you can't touch, you can't hug right now. They're not right next to you, but, but they hear you and they get your messages. They get what you're saying to them. It just takes a little bit of time. Um, so prayer is kind of like writing a letter to somebody that you love. And that brings us to our next question is why? 
should we pray? Why should I even pray? You know, if that's what prayer is, if it is that simple, if it is that easy, um, then what's the point of even doing it? And the first point that I want to make here is that prayer isn't for God. Prayer is for you. When you pray, you know, you can't add anything to God. You know, and we can't give Him anything that He doesn't already have. We can't tell God anything that He doesn't already know. And so you might be thinking, well, that just defeats the purpose. You know, if He already has everything, if He already knows everything, and um, I can't give Him anything that He doesn't already have, need, or want, then, then why should I even pray? And this doesn't defeat the purpose of prayer, but instead it, it should actually be a breath of fresh air for us. Because when God asks us to pray, He is giving us an invitation to invite Him to be with us in our lives. You know, prayer reminds us that we don't have to have it all together. And we don't have to have all of the answers. Because it's enough in prayer just to trust and to be with the person who does. You know, it's, it's actually really relieving that God has all the answers. Because that means that my prayers don't have to be perfect. It's really relieving that God already knows what's going on in my life. Because then I don't have to have a long, you know, super long checklist of all the things that I need to ask God for and make sure that He knows. Because He already knows. You know, God actually has the ability to answer prayers that you don't even pray. God actually has the ability to give you things that you didn't even ask for. And so when we pray to God and we ask for these things, God listens as if it's the first time he ever even heard it, or as, as if it's the first time he's ever even hearing it. When we tell him things, it's as if he's never heard it before. If we ask for things, it's as if we've never asked for it before, or as if he didn't even know that we needed it. Because he wants to, to listen to us and to engage with us. But, but he already knows, and so that weight is taken off of our shoulders, and we can just relax and know that God has it all under control, and he is good, and he is God, and so we can just say what's on our mind, talk about things that are important to us, and God will be there, and he listens. And the second point that I want to make here, um, as for why should we pray, um, we should pray because we weren't made to be alone. And I have a quote here from one of my favorite books of all time called The Shack, uh, written by William Paul Young. If you guys have been around for a little while, you remember that earlier this year we actually watched that movie together. Um, and this is a quote from that book that God says to the main character, Mac. He says this. He says, For any created being, autonomy is lunacy. Freedom involves trust and obedience inside a relationship of love. You were created to be loved. So for you to live as if you were unloved is a limitation, not the other way around. And the biggest point that I want to make here is that just simply that we were not made to be alone. You know, those three words, autonomy is lunacy. I know you guys might not know what that means. So autonomy is like autonomous by yourself. And lun like lunacy is like, like craziness. So to be by yourself is craziness. You know, as created beings, we weren't made to be alone. We were made to live in a relationship of freedom where we have obedience and love. You know, we can be obedient to God because we know that He has the best in store for us. It's not like we're slaves to God, but we're like children to God. And we can trust Him because He has the best intentions for us. So when we're loved, when we live in that relationship of love, when we invite God into our lives to, to just do life with us, to be a part of our every day, that's not a limitation. But in fact, living alone is the limitation. You know, you can go your whole life and not have a relationship with God. You can go your whole life and not pray. And you can survive. You'll still get three square meals a day. You will still be breathing. You'll still be alive until you're not. But you can live without a relationship of love with God. But you will be limited for your entire life 
because you were created to be loved. And so living outside of that relationship of love, living outside of the very thing that we were made for, you can do it, but they give the analogy of it's like a bird whose wings are clipped. You know, a bird can live walking around its entire life on the ground with its wings clipped. It can probably survive feeding off the scraps and whatever it can find in the ground. But it was created to fly. And so love for us is that flying. Love for us is that ability to take off and to soar and to experience things we have never experienced before and to live life to its fullest in freedom when we experience that love. It's not something to be shied away from and it's not something that's uncool. You know, love and living in that relationship of love with God is the very thing that we were created for. And so we weren't created to be alone and so when we invite God into our lives that is when we are truly living so the third question how do I pray then so you know I know what prayer is and I know why I should pray so third how do I pray and I want to take us to Matthew chapter 6 and verses 7 through 13 here and kind of break this apart a little bit um, and I'm actually going to be reading in the message. So if you have your Bible, uh, it's not the message version, that's fine. Or if you have your Bible app or computer nearby where you can look up the message version, um, that would be great. And I want to read through the message because this is actually the Our Father prayer. So if you've ever been in, college, or in uh, a Catholic um, church before, you know, you'll hear this prayer almost every single time. It's very repeated, and a lot of times it's in very old English, and that's how it's often repeated and translated. So I wanted to read through the message to give us kind of a different take on this prayer so we can hopefully um, understand a little bit better what Jesus is actually trying to say to us here in uh, Matthew chapter 6. So here, it's the, here it is, verses, uh, Matthew chapter 6, verses 7 through 13. This is what Jesus says. He says, the world is full of so-called prayer warriors who are prayer ignorant. They're full of formulas and programs and advice, peddling techniques for getting what you want from God. Don't fall for that nonsense. This is your father you are dealing with. And he knows you, or he knows better than you what you need. With a God like this loving you, you can pray very simply like this. Our Father in heaven, reveal who you are. Set the world right. Do what's best. As above, so below. Keep us alive with, with three square meals. Keep us forgiven with you and forgiving others. Keep us safe from ourselves and from the devil. You're in charge. You can do anything you want. You are ablaze in beauty. Yes, yes, yes. And the first point that I want to pull out here is when... Um, when Jesus says that you can pray very simply like this, our Father in heaven. You know, for Jesus, prayer was as simple as writing a letter. His prayers were an ongoing conversation with his Father over a period of time. Oftentimes we read in the Gospels that Jesus did separate himself from the disciples and he got alone. Um, maybe he knew uh, the importance of being still. Um, so he would go off on his own and he would pray um, to God, but it was just an ongoing conversation for him. It wasn't um, this big, you know, formal thing. It was just something that he always did. He just always prayed. For Jesus, prayer was as simple as writing a letter to his Father. Going on, Jesus says um, in his prayer, reveal who you are. Set the world right. Do what's best. As above, so below. And the second point here is that Jesus asks for this world to look more like heaven, not because he thinks God is a control freak, but because he knows that we are. And that's an important point here. Jesus asks for our world to be more like heaven, not because he thinks God is a control freak or because he thinks that God just wants to be in control of everything, but because he knows that we are. You see, we as humans have a control problem. We as humans are the ones who have to have a handle on everything. And when we feel like we don't have control, when we feel like we don't have things that are certain and that we understand and that are, are solid, that's when we start to fall apart. But God doesn't act that way. Jesus wants 
God to be in control because when God's in control, the best things happen. The best intentions are for us. We as human beings, when we're in control, we're selfish and we mess things up. We do things for our own good and oftentimes not for the good of others. And so Jesus asks for this world to be more like heaven because when God's in control, that is honestly what is best for all of us because God's intentions are good. God is good and we can rest and we can trust in that. So when this world is more like God's world, this world is much, much better. Jesus continues on and he says, keep us alive with three square meals. So the third point here is that Jesus shows humility in his prayers. He doesn't ask for an abundance, but he asks for just enough. You know, a lot of times when we pray to God, we ask for the new Xbox. We ask for, you know, all of this stuff. And what Jesus prays for is just, you know, God, can I please have three square meals a day? Just give me enough for what I need to do um, what you've called me to do here. Just give me enough. And that's something that I feel like a lot of us should pray a lot more about because we all have way more than we need, if we're honest. But if we just pray for just enough, then we'll have more to give to others. Jesus goes on to say, Keep us forgiven with you and forgiving others. Keep us safe from ourselves and the devil. And the fourth point here, Jesus himself asks for help and for guidance. And so we should too. When you pray, you should absolutely ask God's opinion. When you pray, you should always absolutely ask God for guidance. Jesus did it. He did it on multiple occasions. Asks God what he should do. Asks God for help. So we should do the same thing too. And then he finishes off his prayer here and his kind of template prayer for us. And he says, Jesus says, you're in charge. You can do anything you want. You're ablaze in beauty. So at uh, the fifth point here to end this, the last point I want to make is that Jesus wasn't afraid to let God take the lead because he knew his intentions and his plans are best. You know, there is such a freedom in trust. There is such a freedom when you can truly allow somebody to take the lead, allow God to take the lead, and you can trust that he's good. You know, so many of us with bad experiences, maybe growing up with our fathers, you know, we've had bad experiences and we don't know what a, what a father is like or, or what a good father is like anyways. And it can be hard for us to pray to God as a father. And I know, obviously, that it will take time for us to develop that relationship and to understand who God is as we read and, you know, as we take that time to be still and as we pray. But... I want you guys to kind of begin to understand how freeing it is when you do trust God and when you do allow him to take the lead. You know, Jesus shows us that God is good. Jesus is the embodiment of who God is, and Jesus himself was amazing. He's the good shepherd. He is God with us. And so um, when you pray to God, know that you can Ask God to do what he will in a situation, and it will be the best for you. God is love. God is good. God is trustworthy. And you can hang your head on that. You can stand on that foundation and know that that will always be true, no matter what life circumstance you are in. So as we close tonight, I just want to pray really quick for all of you. Father God, we just want to say thank you. Um, for this opportunity that we have tonight to learn and to read your word, to understand how to talk to you. And we know that talking to you is as simple as writing a letter to somebody that we love. You know, you're just so good. You're always here. You're always listening. You're always a part of our lives. And when we pray, we just ask you to be a part of our lives. And we thank you for doing that. You don't have to be. You don't need us. There's nothing that we can give to you, but you're with us anyways because you're just that good. We thank you for safety and for health for this week. We thank you for all the frontline workers um, that are in the hospitals and in grocery stores doing all that they are in the front lines of, uh, during this pandemic. We just ask for health for everybody um, affected with COVID-19 right now and dealing with symptoms. We just ask that this would be over very soon um, so that we could all get back 
to our normal lives and our healthy lives and that nobody uh, would have to suffer from this any further. We thank you. It's in your beautiful name we pray. Amen. All right, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, we will be back here next week, 7 p.m., uh, so make sure you tune in and read along with us. Starting tonight is going to be the first um, reading plan, the first daily devotional. So uh, check that out as well in the YouVersion app, and we will see you next week. Thank you, guys. Love you.